So I, Icebreaker, I ran across this video and I know we spoke about this before because we've seen it happen uh, previously before, but we can never get enough uh, free game when it comes available. So first topic is, uh, and it'll cure right there. She didn't tell him about her crazy ex. Let me go ahead and play this clip. Y'all seen that clip? I know you're saying that already. Go ahead and play it for the people. Story time. Situation. 2003. Uncle sets me up with a chick that he works with. I think nothing of it. Chocolate. She bad. Okay. Go to her crib. Sitting there. We are enjoying each other's company. We're getting close. We're busting it up. All of a sudden, her phone rings about 10 times in about five minutes. I think nothing of it. Does it again. Now this time, about 20 times. 25 times in about 15 minutes. Now I'm looking at her like, yo, you want to answer that? She gives me the, nah, I know who it is. You want to let me know who it is? Her exact words is, oh, it's just my ex. We just broke up. You know, ain't about nothing. He just can't take no for an answer. And I'm like, you sure I should be over here? She say, yeah. We sitting there. We getting all hot and heavy. Start to kissing, start to touching. Phone rings again, and it constantly keeps ringing. Now I'm looking at her like she's sideways. She finally answers the phone. First thing I hear from homeboy on the other end is, who you in the crib with? She goes, nobody. I'm in the crib by myself. Now I'm looking at her like she's sideways. Because why are you lying? If it's your ex, why don't you tell him the fucking truth? That you got another nigga in the house. All of a sudden, he goes, all right, well, if you ain't in the house, by you in the house by yourself. Come open the door. Her eyes got big as fucking a bubbled eyes bends. Like she just literally got in the, and you can see the fear come across. I've never seen somebody so chocolate turn so white so fast. When she did that, I stood up, I adjusted my clothes. Cause you know, my man, you know, you know, we was about to get a little hot and heavy. I had to adjust myself real quick. Literally adjusted my waistband and I pulled out the 45 that I had on me. Cocked one, put it in the chamber, took the safety off. And I told her, I put on my jacket, I said, let's go. And then she looked at me, why you got that in my house? We're not playing these type of games. I'm not about to lose my life because you want to lie. When she opened the door, three of his boys came in. All three of them had teardrop tattoos on their face. When I had my burner out, they all knew what it was hitting for. Excuse me, I'm walking out the door. You talk to your woman. Listen, gentlemen, a lot of these chicks be gassing us up. Don't go to their crib if you ain't tooled up because it might be the last time. And a lot of them will put our freedom on the line because if something would have went off, everybody would have to go because I can't leave no witnesses. So be careful if you're going to be on the females' houses. Even when I drive out of state, that joint stay in the damn trunk. I apologize for the long video, but I think it was a very important <laughs> uh, telling a good story. The first thing I thought is, uh, why are you at our house? But it happens, right? I get it. Um, everybody, I like that guy. everybody don't have to respond. It's, it's an icebreaker. So if you want to chime in, maybe you uh, want to add to it, get some insight for the people that's watching. What were you guys' thoughts when you heard? I just want to say I, I like that guy. He doesn't want to leave any witnesses. He knew it was up. Damn. I'm like, yo. I didn't even see the whole thing. I didn't know the video was that long. But I guess I'll start since I'm already talking. Um, yeah, so uh, I think every dude, literally every dude that I know has some kind of story such as that. And it really starts with them being lied to by a woman. Now, the crazy part about it is that I think we have a common misconception as men that women are angels and women like, you know, even when we were younger, it wouldn't do something like that. Nah, she going to be straight up. If her dude, she wouldn't bring me to her crib while her dude here. She's not that stupid or why she's still living with the dude. But I think those are the beginning stages of men starting to learn that women can be deceptive. They do cheat. And you don't want to be the wrong, unprepared guy on the other side of that. So um, I had a similar situation just like that older woman. You know what I mean? And uh, luckily, the guy had his head on straight. He didn't want to deal with me. He wanted to deal with her. But that's not going to happen. That's not how it's going to shake out all dudes so yeah like he said if you're going to be out here even messing with women on a certain level as a man you need to control the whole situation so that, that's one game that i got from 
other dude, don't go to her crib at all. She can say anything happened there. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So dudes just got to be smarter. If you're going to be out here in these streets, you got to move smarter. And like that dude said, y'all know I'm pro 2A. So, yeah, keep your keep your strap on you at all times. These women even set you up in their own crib. All right. So that's all I got. Uh, anybody else want to add on the icebreaker? Uh, real quick. So it's it's not so going to a woman's house is not uncommon historically. I hear that a lot. You know, oh man, what you doing at her house? And you know, don't go to that's new. Back in the day, we went to women's houses. We went to the girls' house. We pulled up at their houses. We went to go check them out. We had seen their cousin. They came outside, you know, out here in LA, they came outside and talked to you at your car. That was almost like a way for a guy to flex. Pull up in a in a Nissan truck or a 5.0. Going to women's houses is common. That's what in most people that we that's listening to this podcast. If you're over 30 years old, you, you went to her house. The thing about it is that with YouTube and podcasting and the Internet and Instagram and Clubhouse, what ha what's happening is men are comparing notes that we was not able to do back in the day. I was there was no way I could reach really pretty much past Los Angeles, much less. The United States, fuck the world. But now we're talking to people, you know, we, all, the, all the brothers on the channel is all from different states. And so I'm hearing how it goes down in Chicago and I'm hearing how it goes down in Texas. I see how y'all get down in Atlanta. I'm out here in Los Angeles. It's like, oh, so that's how, that's how these women is moving in your town too? We weren't able to communicate like this 20 years ago. iPhone was invented in 2010. So now that we're able to communicate, we're telling these new stories. Don't go to women's houses. This is how you're supposed to move. This is one of the whole purposes of these men's spaces and these conversations that we're having that we didn't have before. So the story that dude had is not really uncommon. It happened a lot. Like, like Trigger Mike said, it may have happened to some of you guys. Just now it's good that we're able to, that men are able to communicate with other men about how things are going, how things went, and how we need to move in the future. I want to I definitely want to speak on this. Uh, this has happened to me plenty of times. <laughs> plenty of times. Like uh, I've told y'all before, I've been over a chick's house. You know, I do what I do over a house. And this this part happened plenty of times. And I walk back out to my car and it'd be dudes sitting on my car. I just walk up to them. Oh, this me. Oh, this you. Yeah. And I get in the car and leave. And I, it'll happen in, in another hood. They'll be sitting on my car. It's just simply a warning. They, they, they can rob me. They can do this. They can do that. But depending on, you know, how you carry yourself, they know you somebody or you kin to somebody or you know somebody. That's the reason why I'm over there. So you, it'll be, that your, it'll be to your best interest to just let me go back to my car and let me go. No problem. So to me, you know, I was a little stupid, but it was a thing where anybody gonna mess with me and I would do it. I wasn't a tough guy. I just knew nobody was gonna mess with me. So it happened a, a, a few times. I was over at Chick's house um, <laughs> and bamming on the door. I'm like, yo, just go to the door and let him know, like, yo, he's going to shoot you through the door if you keep banging on the door. He has a gun. What? And she went to the door and said, I, he got a gun. I don't want no problems. Like, don't, don't, just, just go home. And, you know, he left. Whether he, nothing happened. I ended up um, staying over there and I left out the house. Nothing happened. So you could say it was luck, but at the end of the day, yeah, it's a lot of these scenarios that happen because I went over chicks' houses. And just like what Shan said, it's what you do, you know, like for, I, I actually got set up. I had a, um, I drove a truck at one point, right? And I met this chick way out on the other side of town, out in uh, Lothonia in Atlanta. And um, I went over there, smashed, and she started acting weird. And I'm like, yo, what, what's wrong with you? And she was just like, I just, just, just be careful walking out. I'm like, why? 
I ain't got no gun. I got no nothing because I'm I was fresh off of work. She was like, just, 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 just be careful. I'm like, why? So I leave out and I get back in my truck and I drive away. She didn't expect me to pull up in a work truck. In other words, this dude ain't got no money. What are we going to rob him for? He ain't got no money. She ended up telling me on the phone because I ended up calling her like, yo, I'm driving. What, what's, what's going on? She was just like, <laughs> I was going to set you up, but you look like you ain't got no money. <laughs> so all kinds of stuff don't happen to me, but maybe I'm, I'm lucky. Maybe I'm lucky. Like, so <laughs> to me, in a, in a way, in a weird way, I don't know. It's just what happens or the risk you take when you go over a chick's house. And I was just used to it. So nothing happened to me. So I don't know. Maybe I'm stupid. <laughs> I'll tell you what else, though. You got to be careful even about inviting a chick to your house because chicks to get to your crib and drop the low and you're just as vulnerable at your crib as you was at hers. That part. So yeah. That's why you got to pay attention to who you dealing with type of woman you're dealing with. You need cameras and stuff set up at your crib. You need a couple pistols or whatever it is that you carry set up at, at your crib, you know what I'm saying, and, and had them alerts come to your phone. Like You got to take extra precautions because, again, I, I say it all the time, that's the easiest way to line a dude up in the world is through a female. Most dudes are just thirsty. They're going to they gonna let their dick lead them. So if, if, if you, we're trying to get in touch with a dude, we're trying to get at a dude, just send a female his way, and she be fine as hell, and he willing to go to, yeah, come on to the crib. And she gets to the crib, drop the low. And he's just waiting outside your door, wait, waiting outside your window. Even if they don't come to your crib, you're in apartments, they downstairs waiting on you to walk to your car and grab and get your ass like that too. So, you know, it's – it's. I mean, I don't know, man. You just got to take, take precautions, bro. And like, like old boy said, man, keep it on you, you know, or, or at least something if you – you know, because a lot of dudes is, is scared of pistols and things of that nature. But you need to keep something on you to protect mm -hmm. yourself because if not, I mean, you, you, you fooled. Out here in, in this area we in, especially, especially if you any type of successful. And the difference Trill. between back then Trill. and now is like just like Shan said, it wasn't the internet. So people knew people. People had an understanding of who people were. Here now, nobody cares about who you are because everything is just so everywhere you know people from out of town or whatever so it's people from certain hoods they can do certain things and they like i right, you must know somebody over here so i'm not gonna mess with you but now yeah it's different uh lil wayne trill the song mona lisa have you heard it Everybody, go listen to the song Mona Lisa by, by Wheezy, by Lil Wayne, but listen to the lyrics. Trill just triggered me on that when he was saying, you got to watch it when they come to your house, too. That entire song is, is, is uh, Lil Wayne talking exactly about what uh, Trill just talked about. So everybody go listen to, go Google or go to YouTube and watch, uh, listen to the song Mona Lisa by Lil Wayne. Uh, anybody else want to chime in? What about you, Mindset Mogul, Cloud Jones? Yeah, I'll jump in real quick. Uh, my, my, my perspective is a little bit different here. Like for me, like whatever I tune into, I turn into. And I think that's for everybody, right? What you tune into, you turn into. I don't have these particular stories. I not I don't have these stories. Um, but I do have caution just like that as well. I had a situation uh, a while back where I did go to a woman's house and she was fresh off a breakup. You know, she didn't disclose the information to me right away. I'm in her house already. And then she's talking to me. She's like, yeah, that's my ex-boyfriend suitcase right there. And, you know, he's out of town. I'm like, wait, oh, what? Like, he's still he's still in the picture. So, no, nah, I got to go. Unfortunately, like, I, I got to move. The type of person like me is successful? No, nah, I got to go. I can't be in these type of situations. So you never really know what type of woman would do that. You could be with a woman for X amount of time, and she still could set you up. The point is really, like, do do what you can to set precautions so that way you can make the best moves. But I would really say the biggest thing is get to know a person. I think most of us now, we don't really get to know people. We just kind of rush into it. Like you be, you could be on a, a dating app. You can meet the girl the same day you have sex with her like that. And I think the instantaneous part about the new world that we live in can get us caught up in different things, but there's no stopping it, right? There's no way to tell who's going to do what or who's going to be that snake or anything going forward in the future. 
the best thing you could do is try to protect yourself and move with caution and, and operate like a, a person with intention. Hey, mindset though. Well, if if the suitcase was he was on his way out, so why'd you cut her off if he, if if the ex was on his way out? No, I didn't cut her off. I just didn't think that I would stay in her place because at any moment this guy could come back. I don't know this person. I don't know his love for her. I don't know what he would want to do um, for her love. I don't know. So just I don't be in those. I don't. I wouldn't put myself in that type of situation. So I'm just like, yeah. Unfortunately, now ain't the time. You know, you can come check me at a different spot, or I met up with her at a different location, right? Like you know, Airbnb, anything like that. But the point is, you never know. Still, right? Like anybody can do anything at any point in time. So there's no escaping it. But I do want to make sure I'm putting myself in the best position possible versus uh, sticking in sticky situations. Yeah. Not. <laughs> Nowadays, a lot of these dudes is unhinged. A lot of these dudes is unhinged. You don't really know what you're walking into. But I think one of the most important parts that mindset left was you got to kind of get to know a person a little bit, right? One of the things that I always ask, especially when dealing with anybody at any capacity, is is there anybody out there who thinks that they're in a relationship with you? Because you don't have to only watch out for the ex boyfriend you have to watch out for the stalker the dude who's been checking her out online lives two blocks down from her these type of dudes do exist and they be spinning the block watching who comes in and out and to develop this whole relationship type of deal he might she might have i don't know bought a coffee one day or something right and those dudes be just as hinged as the ex-boyfriend, but definitely got to ask, you know, is anybody out there who thinks they're in a relationship with you or somebody thinks that they're attached to you, right? Because that infatuation is just as deadly. But definitely even going to their houses um, is a problem. But I, I, I would say that bringing them to your house is just as a bigger issue, especially if you don't own any weapons to protect yourself or have the you know, proper security system to kind of um, catch anybody in the act. But I, I think a lot of the, the 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 stories that go untold is that there's a lot of tough dudes there in the cemetery because in the moment of truth, a lot of people will reveal who they are. So I'll leave that right there. I'll tell you another thing, too, for the, for the dudes that's taking chicks to hotels, never get them a copy of your key. If you get two keys made, you keep both of them. Don't ever get no chick, no copy of your key ever, ever. I don't care what, what she say. I don't care what the situation is. I'm gonna leave it at the day. Don't do that. If you're inviting a chick that you ain't that ain't your girl to kick it with you at a hotel, you keep both keys at all times. I'll just say that. All right. Anybody else want to chime in for we go to the next one? Yeah. I'll, 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 Y'all said you uh, y'all said you can get to know someone, but you can be with someone for X amount of time and still get caught up. Seeing brothers go through this make me appreciate my marriage. You know, I don't feel comfortable pulling any trigger over some buns. Now my wife, that's a different story. So I'm glad I'm in a situation I'm in. I'm glad I ain't gotta be out here in the streets trying to figure out. What, what guy or what who's crazy or what which ex is trying to come it ain't worth it to me man that's why i always preach man go ahead and get on your purpose get yourself established find you a good woman and get out get out the game that's all i can say find you a good woman that's the problem but it's not even that's some people that's true but Bruce, it's not even that because I could tell you a situation that I recall. There was uh there was this one brother who was in the academy to become a police officer. And halfway through the academy, he met this woman. And this woman, you know, was in a relationship before with a guy who ended up going to jail, ended up doing about three years, right? And um, they broke up, split up. She started dating the, the dude who was in the academy to become a police officer. You know, relationship heated up. They started getting closer. One thing led to another. They were in a relationship for about a year. 
mind you, this woman never brought up the fact of her ex being a criminal, never brought up the fact that he had gone to jail. And on one fair Sunday, she he was over her house watching football on the couch, and she was in the kitchen cooking. This dude had gotten out of jail. She didn't realize it. She, neither did the dude on the couch. He went and knocked on the door. Long behold, the dude opened up the door and witnessed some other dude in his chick's house who he used to live in. And the kicker part was she never changed the locks. He had a key. He had a key to the, to the apartment, right? And when he saw a homeboy watching football in the in the in the living room space and her in the kitchen in like Sunday shorts. He lost it, ended up killing the dude just a week before he graduated from the police academy. So just omitting information, she didn't necessarily lie, but she omitted that part of the information. And that part is just as important and just as vital because although she moved on, he did not move on. And that that man lost his life because of that. That's unfortunate, man. So what what, what was this man convicted of? And uh, you say it was a serious relationship. It wasn't serious enough for them to have separate dwellings. Well, they had been in a relationship for about a, a little over a year because the, the time frame was that homeboy went away for three years. And she met homeboy who was in the academy somewhere halfway in this process. And I think she was like off for like maybe six months before she moved on. She stopped writing to the dude who was in jail, didn't visit, just told him that it was over. But for him, it wasn't over. I don't know you what say, the you say she omitted. You say she omitted that information. Do you think a wife would omit that information? Hmm. Well, she wasn't a wife. She was a girlfriend. I mean, they were together. I mean, they lived in separate dwellings, but, you know, he had gone over her house for, like, Sunday, you know, for Sunday dinner, right? They were watching the game. And uh, that, that part was never disclosed about the dude being in jail or the fact that he was violent, too. I believe yeah. where he went for jail was uh, drug possession. 